Welcome to Disciple Disciplines, the podcast about Christian discipline. Soldiers in the Army of the Lord. Hello and welcome to episode number 21 of Disciple Disciplines. My name is Glenn Ford, your host of this podcast. Hey Saints, today we're going to continue our series on removing the religious glasses. The episode previous to this one, I introduced you to this series where I'm going to be talking about these false doctrines and really coming to the truth and really removing these religious glasses that so many of us have because we've grown up in denominations and false doctrines and so forth, that's really hindered a lot of people. So today we're going to continue with this, and I'm going to be talking about Paul's thorn in the flesh. Now, if you've been in church for quite a while, I'm pretty sure that you've heard some sermon at some time about Paul's thorn in the flesh. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of false doctrine around Paul's thorn in the flesh. People were trying to use that as an excuse for a sickness or an oppression, or something like that, they'll say, well, God gave Paul a thorn in the flesh, you know, to keep him humble, and these kind of things, and thinking that it's a sickness, or a disease, or a a demon, or something like that, and it's it's really a really bad doctrine, because it really does hinder us, like all false doctrines do, and to believe something like that, then that's going to hinder us from ever trying to pursue to become more like Christ, to bear more fruit for Christ. Because if we do, then we may be given a demon by God or some kind of disease or sickness. It's really ridiculous. And we, if we believe that, then we're not going to really pursue the things of God. So we've got to address this, okay? So let's go and have a look at this. I hope you've got your Bible. If you haven't got it, go and get it. Go on. Go and get your Bible. Grab something to write on. Grab a pen. And let's take some notes, okay? Read through the scriptures. And let's learn this, okay? Now, this scripture we find over in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Starting from verse 7, it says here, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it may depart from me, and he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, to understand what Paul is saying here, what we do not want to do is just assume something. We want to really get an understanding of this, and the only way to do this is to read the Bible. Okay, read other scriptures. Now, we want to break this down. We want to know what is a thorn in the flesh. What is that? Then we want to know what is a messenger of Satan. Okay? Don't assume one's a demon. No, don't assume things. Just go and read the Bible and find out. And we've also got to find out what it means to be buffeted. Because Paul said a messenger of Satan was given to buffet him. So we've got to look at this. I mean, let's break this down and find out. Now, if we first go back to the book of Numbers, chapter 33, let's go and have a look at this. And we're going to see what is this thorn in the flesh that Paul is referring to here. Now, if you read through chapter 33, we see here, this is where Israel was on the move. Okay, they moved from different location to location to location. And God was bringing them into this promised land. He was preparing them for this. And he talks about these nations and the inhabitants of these nations that God said to them that that would drive them out. Okay. Let's pick it up here from verse 50. But the Lord is speaking to Moses. He says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you have crossed the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Destroy all their engraved stones, destroy all their molded images, and demolish all their high places. You shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell in it. 
For I have given you the land to possess. And you shall divide the land by lot as an inheritance among your families. To the larger you shall give a larger inheritance, and to the smaller you shall give a smaller inheritance. There everyone's inheritance shall be whatever falls to him by lot. You shall inherit according to the tribes of your fathers. Now look at verse 55. But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall be that those whom you let remain shall be irritants in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and they shall harass you in the land where you dwell. Okay? God is talking about these people, these inhabitants of these foreign lands, whom God had commanded to drive them out and destroy all their idols and so forth. And he says, if you do not drive them out, then there will be irritants in your eyes and thorns in your sides. Okay? Now, let's go to Joshua chapter 23. And we're going to see again about these thorns in the sides. Now, if you read through chapter 23 of Joshua, Joshua is speaking to Israel. He calls for the elders, the judges, the officers. And he says to them that he was old and advanced in age. And he said to them also that how they had seen all that the Lord God had done for them, how he fought for them. And then he tells them to keep the commandments of God. Now let's pick it up here in verse 11. And he says, Therefore, take careful heed to yourselves that you love the Lord your God, or else, if indeed you do go back and cling to the remnant of these nations, these that remain among you, and make marriages with them, and go into them, and they to you, know for certain that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps to you, and scourges on your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from the good land which the Lord your God has given you. Now, already we can see the first part of what we talked about here, breaking this down in Second Corinthians chapter 12, what is a thorn in the flesh? Well, we can just see from Joshua, and we can see from Numbers, that these thorns in the sides and irritants in the eyes are people. These are figures of speech the Lord is using. Like today, we would say, well, that guy's a pain in the neck. That's a figure of speech, right? So we can see these thorns in the sides or thorns in the flesh is the same thing, are people. Okay. The second thing we want to look at is what is a messenger of Satan? Well, in order to find that out, we need to go back and read prior to this. If we go back to chapter 11, again, saints, another rule for Bible interpretation is read scripture in context. Now, if you read back from chapter 11, we can see here that Paul is defending his apostleship. And if we pick it up here in verse 12, Paul says, But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desired an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Now, this word minister is also the same word messenger or apostle. Okay? These are false apostles. These are people who had come into the church of Corinth. After Paul had come there, he started this church in Corinth, discipled these people. Then he would leave because he was a missionary. He'd go to other places and start churches there, and disciple people there. And then when he was gone, these false apostles would come in and try to undermine Paul's authority and saying that he was not an apostle at all, and they were trying to claim that they were apostles. This is why Paul, if you read through chapter 11 and through chapter 12, he's defending his apostleship. He proved to them that he is a true apostle because of all the persecutions and the trials and stuff that he went through. So these false apostles, these messengers of Satan, are people. Okay, 
just like these thorns in the side, these are people. So these messengers of Satan who are people, these false apostles, Paul is referring to them as thorns in the flesh. Like we read in Joshua and we read in Numbers, the irritants. And this is why we see, back in chapter 12, how Paul pleaded with the Lord three times concerning this thing that it might depart from him. And the Lord said to him, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And then Paul has to change the heart here. Then he says, Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities. That word infirmity means weakness. The literal translation is weaknesses, not sickness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my weaknesses that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in weaknesses, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen? This is what Paul was talking about. He was talking about these false apostles, these people coming against him, persecuting him. Paul went through this his entire ministry, so did all the other apostles, so did Jesus. Okay? And so do us as a body of Christ. If we are living as true disciples of Christ, we will also go through these things, these persecutions and trials and tribulations and and so forth. We go through the same thing. Right? But God doesn't remove that from you. He gives you grace to endure it. If you read Paul's letters, we can see that we, he confirms that. Because he encourages the saints who are going through these trials and tribulations that God's grace is sufficient. Okay, so we're going to have to go through these things, but God's grace is sufficient for us to endure it. This has nothing to do with a demon or a sickness. Sickness is not part of persecution. Okay? Because the, unfortunately, the, the teaching says, well, Paul had received a demon because a messenger of Satan, they thought that was a demon. That God actually gave Paul a demon? That is ridiculous. That is absolutely absurd. How can we put our trust and our faith in a God, a loving God, and then he gives us a demon to torment us? That's ridiculous. That is not how God works. That is not who God is. Okay? He's talking about people. And they're trying to come against you and, and come against your work for the Lord. Yes, but you overcome. They don't overcome you, you overcome them. Because God's grace is sufficient and we can continue. Even though it's hard through hard times, even though it's persecutions, you continue and you have the victory. Amen? Paul did not receive a demon or a sickness. Okay, he's just simply talking about persecutions and these false apostles who keep constantly come against him and against his doctrine. But not only Paul, but also Peter, also James and John, and also all the other apostles, including Jesus. The greatest hindrance against Jesus and his ministry was not the people, but the Pharisees, the religious people. Yeah, the people who knew better. It was them who come against him, who wanted to kill him. Yeah? So that's what Paul was talking about here. Makes make sense? So, let's look at the next one then. What does it mean to be buffeted? To be buffeted means like on a ship. If you're on a ship on an ocean, and there's big waves on the ocean, hitting up against that ship like that bang 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 that is a buffeting okay that's a buffeting doesn't mean that the ship sinks the ship can still ride the waves and still ride through the buffeting and get to its destination even though there's buffeting along the way okay and that's what was happening with Paul it was an, an absolute nuisance and it was a buffeting because he would go and preach something and teach something and then they'll come along and buffet him and, and undermine that and so forth and he was constantly in battle with this. But he had the victory, right? <laughs> he still got the victory, even though there was buffeting. Okay, makes sense? So we don't go around thinking, well, God's given me a demon, or God's given me this sickness to try to humble me, and silly stuff like that. That is ridiculous. Don't think like that. Don't talk like that. And don't preach that to people. I mean, because you hinder them. They cleared that up, saints. And all we did here today was just simply read the scriptures. That's it. That's all we did. Just read it. And it explains itself. We don't have to guess. We don't have to go and do some history study or something like that. We just simply read the scripture. That's it. That's all we've got to do. And it answers itself. Okay? 
So don't just read a few verses and build up a sermon about it. Let's read the context. Let's read the Word of God. Because unfortunately, we're just reading verses and chapters and preaching from that. And that's not how we're supposed to read the Bible. The Bible was never written with chapter and verses. It was written as one letter. This is the letter of Corinthians, the second Corinthians. This is one letter. We don't start from chapter 12. We start from chapter 1 and we read right through. Chapters and verses are simply put there by the translators simply for the sake of reference. So we can look things up. That's all. Okay? So we can really bypass a lot of false doctrines if we just simply read the letter, the whole letter. And so we can see what Paul is talking about, or Peter, or John, or James, or whoever it is that we're reading. Okay, so is that clear up? Well, that's it for me today on this episode. I hope you got something out of this. Go back and download the episode, listen to it again, share it with your family, maybe some people you know who have this false belief about this thorn in the flesh being a demon or a sickness. Give them this episode. Let them listen to it. Let them download it. Share it with them. Go through the scriptures with them. Have a Bible study. If you're having a Bible study in your home, go through this scripture because this is one that is it's very prominent, unfortunately. A lot of people believe that this is a demon or a sickness, or they're just confused. They don't know what it is. So there's a lot of discussion about it, but the discussion is based on opinions and what I think and what they think. But it's not about just what does the Bible say, right? So if you know people, maybe in your little Bible study or in your church or family, who are questioning this, sit down with them and go through the Word with them, okay? We've got to help each other, saints. Remember to download it, share it out, use it. It is a tool to help us grow, to become into the fullness of Christ. Amen? So, until next episode, saints, look forward to it. Next one, we're going to be talking about generational curses and what a deception that really is to try to tell someone who's born again, has the spirit of life, that they're under a curse. That is absolutely ridiculous. It's a false doctrine and it must be removed. And these episodes are going to help to do that. Share them out with your friends, your Bible study group, your church group, so we can get this awakening and understand the truth so we can walk in our freedom. Okay? Okay, saints? Hey, that's it. Till next time. Love you. God bless you. Amen.